Everybody and happy holidays. It's Rob Schlachter again from the Marlboro Regional Chamber of Commerce with our member spotlight. And today's um, subject is, I think, near and dear to everybody's heart. If uh, you have been driving uh, anywhere near the vicinity of going up Route 20, you'll see an unbelievable library project underway and a renovation that is going to be quite spectacular. And we are thrilled today to have the president of the Marlboro uh, Public Library Foundation, uh, Mr. Bill Keels, with us today in studio to answer some questions and give us some information about this exciting project. So, Bill, first of all, happy holidays and welcome, uh, welcome to the studio. Thank you, Rob. Happy holidays to you, and I'm glad to be here. Great. So let's get right to it. Uh, I know there's a lot of people interested. Tell us how the vision of the new library came to be. You know, interestingly, the library as we know it opened up in 1904. Oh, wow. And in the 1970s, they expanded the library as we see it today. Mm -hmm. And over the years since then, the Marlboro population literally doubled in size over the next 20 years. And the librarians and the, and the librarian workers started to realize a pattern of customers looking for more resources, looking for more opportunities and more parking for that matter. Mm -hmm. So it became very clear that we needed to expand and grow not only for now, but for the future. So that's how the vision came to be in terms of the next steps. Awesome. And it's, uh, it looks to be quite uh, quite an expansion, isn't it? Can you talk a little bit about you know what people are going to see once this is done? Yes, uh, they are going to get a spectacular library. There's going to be more space where you can move around, be able to focus in on studies and really have a great community center where people can get together of all generations. We can offer much more programming. We have space for boardroom planning space for, we have space for a large boardroom. So for those local businesses and communities that really need that space to bring people together, it'll be there for a resource for them. Wow, that's fantastic. So you uh, can just schedule time and reserve uh, some of the boardrooms? Yes, there'll be details coming up and how that can be scheduled. And of course, we'll always be glad to accommodate as we can. Awesome, awesome. So I, I think everybody uh, you know who has been through the pandemic uh, with us is very curious about a project this size. How did the pandemic impact the project itself? We are actually very fortunate because Marlboro has always done a great job in staying focused on its projects and thinking ahead. We had the plans ready by 2016. So when the pandemic set in, we thought ahead to just making sure that, and I say we, I say the city, to ordering supplies. So we were ahead of the supply chain, for example, steel. Hmm. They ordered those earlier so they would have it when they were ready to start construction. Excellent, excellent. So um, for the viewers, you, you have some unbelievably strong proponents. You'll always have some people um, you know, who are questioning, what, what's the biggest misconception about the library project itself? One of the biggest misconceptions out there is that it's just all about books, but we're huh. really coming upon a digital age. And it's not only about books, it's about the electronic resources that come with it. It was incredible how many digital books individuals were taking out from the library during the pandemic. Mm. But even beyond that, Rob, it's about having, again, that community center for everybody in not only Marlboro, but the surrounding communities. Right. I'm sure it's going to be quite a draw. Um, it, it looks to be outstanding. So for folks out there who maybe want to get involved and even contribute because obviously you have state funds that, you know, have been granted, uh, but you're always looking to do, um, you know, more funding uh, to, to offset uh, some of the costs. How do people who want to contribute or get involved do that? 
Yes, uh, there are many avenues. Uh, first off, they can certainly visit our website and they can go to, uh, they can visit our website at www.marlboro-ma.gov. And they can also email us at marlboro-foundation at gmail.com. Awesome. And you can see that up on the screen um, and we'll leave them there. So folks who really do want to learn more or get more involved uh, can do so. So obviously um, this is going to benefit uh, not only the community, but as you mentioned, businesses, local businesses in the area. So um, you've been in touch through the chamber um, to businesses as well. How has that relationship benefited uh, you know, the project and have you had an engagement from some of the local businesses? Yes. The foundation has always appreciated the chamber and the local businesses. The common connection I see is the chamber is there to support Marlboro, support the economy, and make sure that Marlboro is a place people want to live, work, and play. And bringing that library is that same common bond that we have. So we've been very fortunate to have resources from everyone in the community. Well, we really appreciate you coming uh, in today and updating us. This is going to be really an unbelievable impact to the Marlboro community and even you know beyond. And we so appreciate all the efforts of uh, the foundation and the committee and all those responsible for bringing this project. And I wanna thank you very much and wish you the best of luck. I understand it's about 40% complete. There's a target date of spring of 2023. So this is right around the corner. That's right, when the snow melts, hopefully we'll be ready to open those doors. Awesome, awesome. So thank you for joining us uh, for this segment and support your local library.